So in the last unit, we talked about um, the ideas of all the body parts at the big level, um, naming the regions of the body, naming the organs of the body and the organ systems that they make up. Uh, and then we skipped over to the very small things that make up the body, the uh, atoms and uh, various forms of bio biomolecules and the cells, of course, that make up the body. Um, there's one level in the middle between those two extremes um, that is what? Yeah, tissues, okay. Um, so all of the organs of the body are made up of at least two tissues. Um, you think of the most simple tissue, the most simple organs in the body, um, you know, the skin has at least three different tissue types in it. The uh, uh, the bones have at least two different tissue types in them. The muscles have at least two different tissue types. So, uh, we're, uh, you know, uh, what a lot of people do is they start with all the different kinds of tissues in one fell swoop. And I find that that, you know, that's what most of the textbooks do, but I find that that's kind of overwhelming. Um, it's, it's a lot of information at once, and it's very hard to learn any one piece of it very well if you're trying to learn it all at once. So what we're doing in this, uh, this time through the class, the reason we didn't lump tissues in with the first exam, is that I'm going to break the tissues out into one tissue type for each uh, of the next four units. So as we learn about skin, we're going to be learning about epithelial tissues. As we learn about uh, the bones and cartilages of the body, we're going to learn about connective tissues. and. Um, as we learn about the muscles, we're learning about muscle tissues, and as we learn about the nerves, we'll learn about nervous tissue. Um, I would love your feedback on whether this works, especially those of you who are taking this for a second time, you know, whether this is uh, more accessible than cramming all the tissues into one unit. Uh, okay, that preamble over. Uh, there are uh, four different kinds, you know, big kinds of tissues, and that's roughly where we'll start, but it occurs to me that uh, we, we haven't yet come up with a working definition of what a tissue is. So uh, we're going to start there. Um, so definition. A tissue is. Okay, so what is a textbook definition of a tissue? If you were just to look it up in your in your textbook, what would it say? This is a group of similar cells uh, in which the cellular material that performs a common function, such as providing protection or facilitating body movement. What textbook is that from? Uh, well, you know, the okay. I am thrilled. That is that is actually a correct definition. <laughs> uh, what well, most of the textbooks uh, seem to tell people, and I'm, I'm going to start with this, is uh, a tissue is basically a, uh, a group of cells um, with a common purpose, okay? Um, Notice her, tissue, her definition was quite a bit longer than that, um, and I like that definition better for a reason. But uh, the, uh, so we're going to edit this definition a little bit. Uh, but this is the one, uh, as far as I can tell, this is the one that most of the textbooks seem to be giving these days. So I'm going to break it into two lines here, a group of cells um, with a common purpose or function. Okay, uh, but uh, I'm going to expand on it. So, uh, what is missing from the tissue if I if I start with just a group of cells? What is what is not included there that should be? Extracellular yeah, extracellular material. And what kind of material would that be? Okay, if you think of our uh, levels of organization of life, we had you know organism system, organ, cell, or tissue, cell, what came next? Molecule. 
molecules, mm -hmm. okay? So we had cells, molecules, and atoms were the things that were smaller than a tissue. So what could a tissue be made of other than cells? Atoms. Molecules and atoms, right? Um, we're not going to break down atoms individually because uh, I mean, everything is made of atoms. Uh, but I am going to say a, a group of cells and biomolecules. Okay? Uh, and that, I think, is more inclusive. Okay? Three of the four tissue types that we're about to discuss uh, are you know, 90 plus percent cells. And so I can see the temptation of a, a textbook writer to say um, a tissue is a group of cells because that makes it very nice and, and simple. But um, the most, uh, the biggest group of tissues of those four is called the connective tissues. And that includes things like a tendon that is at least 90% not cells. Um, a, a cartilage, at least 90% not cells. Bone, I mean, when you look at bone, do you think, wow, look at all those cells? Uh, if, if you actually had a, a piece of bone in front of you, you would not notice cells. You would notice what? You'd notice hard uh, calcium. You'd notice hard calcium crystals. That's a molecule. Um, you wouldn't notice it as much, but they're there. You know, what holds all those calcium crystals together are little collagen fibers. So uh, together, you know, all of those things are called extracellular matrix, and they, um, they fit into this thing called biomolecules, okay? Um, and then, um, so a group of cells uh, that serve a common... Uh, function, perform a common function, uh, but there's an or there because sometimes the tissue uh, may not really have much of a function. Maybe it's just there, okay? It kind of fills in space. So what would you say, what would another way to complete that sentence be? A group of cells and biomolecules that serve a common function or... A and P is the study of functions and make up a structure. Yeah, so serve a common function or form a common structure. Okay, um, and I'm going to go with that. So a tissue is a group of cells and biomolecules that you know, either A serve a common function or B form a common structure. It can do both. You know, maybe I should put an and slash or there because. Um, all tissues, to some extent, are a structure. They take up some space, right? Um, so, you know, let me just put an and or there, okay? So I think that now is a complete definition of tissue, okay? So whenever we talk about, um, for the rest of this class, uh, what tissue is present here, you want to look at... Um, where is there a, a group of similar cells and biomolecules? And maybe I should make that explicit too. Okay, because you, you could mix skin cells and bone cells together in a petri dish and they would not be a tissue, okay? Um, it has to be similar cells and biomolecules and then they serve a common function or form a common structure. So, um, so when we look at the skin, which we've now already done because coming at this from the other direction. Um, you can look at the epidermis and say, that's a tissue. It's a group of similar cells, not many biomolecules there, um, and they're forming a common structure. They're forming a barrier between the inside of the body and the outside. They also are serving a couple of common functions. They're, they're, uh, they do that vitamin D uh, synthesis. They do some protection work. Uh, and then you can look at the dermis and say that's clearly a different tissue because suddenly the cells go away and we have an awful lot of biomolecules, but we have a similar pattern of biomolecules there and um, they're serving a common function and, and forming a common structure. So um, that is 
a good way, I think, to look at this and to divide things up in the rest of the class. Uh, now, tissues have um, a lot of different properties that we could categorize them by, but there are five that I want to draw your attention to uh, that uh, characterize the five different uh, biomolecule, uh, the five different, yeah. There are five different properties I want to draw your attention to that characterize the four different tissue patterns a little bit differently, okay? Um, so the first one is, um, properties. Okay, so the first one is cellularity. Okay, the second, which is in, in some way sort of opposite of that, uh, is uh, extracellular matrix or ECM often abbreviated. Uh, then we have uh, vascularity. We have innervation. We have uh, Generation, uh, and then you know I told you five. I'm going to give you six. Uh, the last one then is uh, function. Okay, uh, what characteristic function, if there is one, that that tissue always seems to carry out? Okay, so I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes if you want to find a partner to to brainstorm with. Uh, to see if you can think of what the definitions of these things might be when we're talking about a tissue. Well, let me what did you come up with for cellularity? Uh, any keywords? Okay. Uh, so if you were to generalize that as a tissue property, just something that would describe any tissue, some of them have tightly packed cells, some of them don't, what would you say? Okay, so types of cells, but also, well, I don't want to rate quality of cells, but uh, but maybe you know that's a good thing in the right direction. What uh, just if you were to measure the cellularity of a tissue, what would you say? Yeah, so number or maybe fraction of the tissue that's made up of cells or something. So, uh, so I yeah, I would say it's the uh, the number and type of cells uh, you know, that, that make up a tissue um, you know, often uh, you know, it's often given as a percentage that we'd say this is a 90% cellular tissue or a nearly 100% cellular tissue or something like that. Uh, okay, and I said kind of the opposite of that is this extracellular matrix. So what would what would fall into a definition of that? Kind of ground substance, calcium, and molecules that are not part of a cell. Okay, so molecules that are not part of a cell. Um, so again, if we were to describe that as a, a property of any tissue, what would we be measuring about the tissue? Yeah, okay, so yeah, again, the, the sort of, you know, number uh, and type of uh, biomolecules um, in a tissue, uh, and, you know, there's so many cell types unique to particular tissues that I'm not going to list them off here, but I will say with the ECM, 
it falls into two categories. Uh, there is uh, what's called ground uh, substance, uh, which is the kind of the space filler of a tissue. Uh, tends to look, uh, you know, it often looks clear. Uh, microscope uh, and, and is, you know, can sort of be thought of as the space filler of the tissue, which is to say that um, it, it might be proteins, it might be carbohydrates, it might be calcium crystals in a bone. Um, ground substance is really diverse. It's just whatever the, the sort of background substance of the tissue is made of. The other group then, other than ground substance, is protein fibers. Uh, and these are more specific. These tend to, uh, tend to stain brightly or darkly. Um, depending on the stain you use uh, in a microscope slide. Um, and they serve different purposes, but they're the, the structural framework of a tissue. So um, examples of those are collagen fibers. Um, you know, uh, collagen fibers are sort of the, the steel cables uh, of a tissue. They, they serve for a strength purpose. Uh, elastic fibers, or elastin is the name of the protein, uh, are more of the rubber bands uh, of a tissue. They are elastic. They, they stretch and snap back to their original shape. Uh, there are other protein fibers that mix in as well, some that cells attach to, others that do, do different jobs. Those are the two main ones, though, that we'll see over and over again in this class. Okay, so um, so that's ECM. Vascularity. Yeah, so not in the cell, in the tissue, yeah. So, um, so number of uh, blood vessels uh, found in the tissue uh, and why is that important? Okay, cellularity and extracellular matrix are clearly important because they're what the tissue is made of and, and largely determine what it can do, what its properties are. But, yeah, so, yeah, so this, this provides uh, nutrients uh, and, you know, oxygen supply that, that we all need, uh, and at the same time it removes wastes, uh, it, uh, it also does many, many other things, it provides, uh, provides hormones that tell the tissue what to do, uh, and immune uh, cells that uh, are, are on the lookout for infections in that tissue, and, and take care of and maintain the tissue. So lots of things that the blood does for a tissue. Now, you may be surprised to learn that only one of the four tissue types is vascular. Uh, the other three depend on that one tissue type to provide them with a blood supply. Uh, and that, that one tissue type is the connective tissues. So whenever you see a muscle tissue, whenever you see a nerve tissue, whenever you see an epithelial tissue, look for it to be connected very closely, very intimately, to a connective tissue layer to provide it with its blood supply. Uh, okay, innervation. What, uh, what's a definition of that? Having nerves. Yeah, so it's, it's got the word nerve in it. Uh, so this would be, uh, this would be sort of the connection uh, to the nervous system uh, 
And you, you can, in this case, uh, there are two ways that you can be innervated. There is sensory, uh, which tells the nervous system uh, what's going on in that tissue. And there is motor. What do you think motor does? Yeah. Motor was named because it activates the muscles, which cause movement but it also activates other kinds of tissues, glands, for example. So motor is where the nervous system tells the tissue what to do, okay? So you can imagine that in an environment where you know, the sensory innervation is telling the nervous system, ouch, my finger is touching something hot, uh, the nervous system will respond with a motor signal to a muscle saying, move that finger out of the way, you moron. Uh, if on the other hand, uh, the, the, okay, good. If on the other hand, the sensory part of the nervous system is telling your, your brain that your whole body is starting to get hot because it's hot outside, the motor response is gonna be to activate one of your sweat glands to tell it to produce sweat. It's still a motor uh, action because it's making something happen, but it, it, you don't notice it in the same kind of gross motor sense that you would pulling your hand away from a, a fire. So uh, different kinds of motor, but they're all motor. Uh, so an innervate, you know, the innervation describes how much the tissue is connected to the nervous system. Uh, and in what way? Um, regeneration. Uh, what do you think that means? What is generation for? To start with. Okay, so what, what would generation be in the first place? If we said we're generating something. What? Yeah, we're producing something in the first place. So regeneration means we're not reproducing in the sense of like giving off new life, but replacing, replacing or fixing, repairing. Yeah. So, uh, so this is ability to repair or replace damaged tissue, okay? So again, uh, you uh, scrape your knee on the pavement, uh, about how long does it take for you to not notice that anymore? About a week or two. Maybe a week, yeah. Depends on how bad it was. I mean, sometimes it goes away in a couple of days and sometimes it takes a couple of weeks, it depends. But pretty quick as, as the scale of life goes. You tear a piece of cartilage, how long does that take? A couple months. Maybe. Years. Maybe. Yeah. I, uh, I tore a piece of cartilage in one of my knees while I was doing a Habitat for Humanity build, you know, working for charity, and uh, <laughs> tore my, my leg cartilage. Um, and uh, went to the doctor, and the doctor, first the doctor said, don't walk on that, you don't want to you know, damage it any further. So I spent like several weeks you know, hobbling around with crutches, and then I go back to see the doctor, and he's like, oh, we misread your x-ray, this is the kind of wound you want to step on. <laughs> yeah, okay. You have uh, really crappy doctors. Uh, yeah. The world is full of good doctors. Oh, yeah. The world is also full of mediocre doctors. I mean, this is this is true in any profession. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, you know, I, I have seen really good doctors too. I just don't have as many stories about them. Uh, but uh, the, the uh, you know, this doctor anyway said, said uh, you know, now you need to take care of your knee by walking on it. So, uh, you yeah. know. But uh, you know, this this many years later, it's it's healed as, as it's gonna be. But I still feel it on you know, particular you know particular days. Uh, so obviously, cartilage tissue has a lower regeneration ability than skin tissue. Is is the point of that? Uh, what's the one tissue in the body that, as far as we know, cannot completely regenerate? The brain, right? Uh, the central nervous system. Yeah. So the brain and spinal cord. Uh, there, there is some degree of regeneration there, especially if you're young. Um, but, yeah. um, but if you completely damage, you know, crush the spinal cord or concuss a particular part of the brain, it, it can sometimes never grow back. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. And the last one, you know, number six, function, okay? Um, that one should be kind of obvious. What is a tissue's function? It's, it's, um, 
Okay, so those are all good definitions. That actually wasn't where I was going. Um, the, uh, Sorry. My brain works weird. Okay. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is, is just, it's, it's basically, you know, what a tissue is capable of doing. Okay. So a muscle tissue, we would describe its function as there's one thing muscles can do. Anybody know what that is? Well, contract, yeah, okay. Uh, they can sometimes cause movement, they can sometimes squeeze on things, they, they can be, the, the goal of the function may be five or six different things, but the one thing a muscle tissue can do is shorten itself, is, is contract. Uh, similarly, nervous tissue has one function. It may do lots of different things for us, but its one function is to carry an electrical signal. Um, and uh, that's, that's what I mean when I talk about sort of root level function of a tissue. Okay. <clears throat> so everybody, everybody okay with that? All right. Then what we're going to do is now move on to the four tissue types. Mm -hmm. The big reveal. Okay. Um, So there are four tissue types that histologists, people who study tissues, um, lump all tissues into one of these four types, uh, though each of the types may have subcategories. Uh, the, uh, and, and I lump those four types into two big groups. And one is what I call uh, structural tissues, and the other are what I call functional tissues. Okay. Now, I should be clear that that does not mean that structural tissues don't have a function, or that functional tissues don't take up space and make you know, form a structure. It's just that in a structural tissue, the orientation of how the tissue is put together seems to be directed more toward forming something. In the functional tissues, the way this, the tissue is put together is more oriented toward doing something. Uh, and it's just a way to organize the ideas. Okay. So the first one is epithelial tissues. Okay. Epi means what? means upon or on top of, okay, on the surface of something. Um, so epithelial tissues were named because the most obvious ones are on the surface of your body in some way. Those would be the skin, you know, the epidermis, uh, but also the mucous membranes of your nasal cavity and your digestive cavity. Uh, those are all uh, functional, uh, those are all surface level things, okay? Uh, and so uh, an epithelial tissue, um, one kind of, you know, epithelial tissues are pretty well described as uh, uh, A group of tightly packed cells on a mission. Okay, I'm a mission from God. Okay, um, so a, a group of tightly packed cells on a mission, and the mission is to do one of two things. Okay, uh, a uh, they can be you know, to form a barrier. Okay, that is, they might be dividing two spaces, or they might be, uh, as in your skin and your mucous membranes trying to keep the outside out and the inside in, okay? Um, then there's that and or. Uh, B, um, secretion. 
secrete or absorb something. Okay. Uh, if the main purpose of an epithelial tissue is to form a barrier, we call that a membrane, um, or we call it a vessel or a tubule if it's uh, a vessel or a tubule or a capsule uh, if it's a round type. Membrane is a you know, flat type. Okay. So in many cases, an epithelial forms a flat sheet that's a membrane. Other times it wraps into a, a vessel or a tubule or a capsule of some sort. Uh, to secrete or absorb something, we call that what? If it's, well, if it's to secrete something, we call it a, anybody know? Start with a G. Gland. Gland, yeah. So uh, it can be a gland if its primary function is uh, secretion, you know, a bunch of cells and they're secreting something. Um, or uh, we don't really have a name for it, but there are other, you know, sometimes membranes or uh, tubules or whatever uh, can uh, absorb across the membrane or tubule or capsule or whatever it's called. Okay. Um, okay, so pausing right there. Any questions about what an epithelial tissue is? If I were to throw out a particular tissue, do you think you'd be able to recognize that it was an epithelium? No, we'll get there in a second. Okay. Uh, so those are epithelial tissues. The uh, kind of the complement to an epithelial tissue uh, is to a connective tissue. So that's the second category of, of the more structural tissues is the connective tissues. So uh, what do you think connective tissues do? They connect things, right? Um, so connective tissues, uh, this is a catch-all uh, this is a catch-all category um, of tissues that uh, aren't uh, epithelial, muscular, Or nervous okay as a result it's hard to say anything about connective tissues that applies to all of them because if there's a tissue that you can't put in one of the other three categories you just throw it into connective tissue um, so I say a lot of typically typically these are um, Lots of extracellular matrix and uh, few cells, okay? You might, um, and the cells that are there tend to not be kind of universal names. Like, you know, every cell in an epithelial tissue is called an epithelial cell. Uh, sometimes, as in the skin, they have special names like keratinocyte, but mostly we just call them epithelial cells. Uh, in connective tissues, they almost always have a special name. If they make fibers, they're fibroblasts. If they make bone tissue, they're osteoblasts, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, and they are, you know, so the cells tend to be specialized, is uh, my point there. Uh, so, uh, typically lots of ECM and few cells. Uh, and typically, um, they are uh, highly vascular, which is why other tissues kind of depend on them for a blood supply. Um, and uh, you know, more, you know, they are typically uh, more structural. And functional. If you ask what the function of a tendon was, it's to get pulled on. Uh, you know, 
mostly it forms a structure that links a muscle to a bone. Uh, if you ask what the function of a piece of cartilage is, mostly it's to bear weight or form a structure. It, it doesn't really do anything once it's there. Uh, other connective tissues are uh, don't fit that pattern. Uh, the uh, bone is very structural, but it also does several functional jobs for our body, like balance our blood calcium and produce our blood cells. So those are very important things that blood, you know, functional things. Uh, and then uh, their missions in the body, uh, they can connect things. Um, and that can be either physically connecting, like the dermis connects the epidermis to uh, the muscle layer under it. Um, they can, or, or it can be sort of a functional connection, like the blood is considered a connective tissue because it connects by circulating around the body, the lungs where the oxygen comes in with, say, the muscles where the oxygen gets used. So it, uh, different ways to interpret the word connect there. Um, they can support, um, and in that sense also protect other structures. So cartilage and bone both support your weight, but they also wrap around more vulnerable things and protect them. Uh, and then another common function, uh, and there's another way to interpret protect as well, the immune system cells fall into the connective tissue category, so that's a different way to protect your body. Uh, and then uh, also many times these things are in uh, charge of storage. Okay, so adipose tissue is considered a connective tissue because it's a catch-all category. It doesn't fit anywhere else. So adipose tissue stores extra energy for your body as fat. Um, the liver um, is considered a connective tissue even though or most of liver tissue is considered connective. Um, uh, and so, in a sense, it does that storage job in that it stores iron to, you know, that you can use later to make blood, it stores uh, glycogen that you can use later to make sugar, that sort of thing. Um, so those are the basic missions. Again, not everything fits one of those three missions. It's, it's a weird category. Okay, so if I said that uh, connective tissues are anything that aren't epithelial, muscular, or nervous, what do you think? Number three is going to be. Pick one. Um, well, I was already writing, sorry. Uh, so we'll go with muscular and then nervous, sorry. Uh, but uh, so muscular tissues, uh, again, we define them more by function than by structure, so I'm going to start there. So as, as I said before, they have one function, and that is to contract. Okay? These are the only cells in the body that are capable of changing uh, their shape and size in order to make uh, movement happen in the rest of the body. Okay? So uh, they can go from about, you know, the, the longest muscle cell in the body I think is a meter long. Uh, they can shorten by as much as half their, you know, a third to a half of their length. Uh, so that can produce quite a bit of movement uh, depending on how they're attached. Uh, they are one of the two electrically uh, excitable cells, okay, uh, or tissues. I guess we're talking about tissues, so but they contain electrically excitable cells, which means that when a motor neuron comes to a muscular tissue, uh, it doesn't just tell it to move, it actually electrically activates that whole muscle cell, uh, which is a pretty cool thing, and we'll talk about that uh, when we get there. Um, and then, you know, their main, you know, their jobs can be uh, uh, movement, uh, it can be uh, Movement, OK? 
okay? I am standing here right now, not moving. Does that mean none of my muscles are, are working? No, they're not working. No, okay? In fact, a lot of my muscles are currently working. I have postural muscles keeping me from falling over. Um, I'm holding my arms out in an awkward position, so my arm muscles are contracting to keep them from moving. Uh, and so, uh, and actually, if you've ever seen a toddler learn to walk, it's quite a funny thing to watch. Uh, I don't mean to make fun of my kids, but they are funny to watch when they're learning to walk. Because things that we take for granted about which muscles to not move and which muscles to move when you're trying to take a step, their brain hasn't figured out yet. And so just taking one step can involve so many body wobbles that it's, it's kind of funny to watch. But uh, the, uh, eventually, they build the muscle memory. So let's start with cellularity. Uh, epithelial tissues we described just a minute ago as being tightly packed cells with a purpose. So what would you say about the cellularity if we did high, high medium, or low? Uh, high. I, I would yeah, have to say high. Um, how about connective tissues? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to put typically uh, in, in there uh, just because we're, we're going to talk about the typical connective tissue, but they change. What are you going to do? Some of them don't fit the pattern. Um, so typically connective tissues are low. We describe those as being typically few cells and lots of, of extracellular matrix. Uh, Muscular tissues. Okay. It's going to be high. The whole purpose of having a muscular tissue is to have muscle cells there, right? Okay. Nervous tissue. Yeah, That would, you know, you would think it would be exactly the same, but um, it turns out some nervous tissues do have some padding to them, some amount of extracellular matrix. So I'm going to put medium high. <laughs> I'm going to cheat there. Uh, so it's, it's definitely higher than medium, but it's not quite as high as the other two. Okay. Uh, then extracellular matrix uh, is, is pretty much going to be the opposite. Uh, so epithelial uh, is, is low. We have just a little strip of extracellular matrix that glues the epithelial tissue to whatever it's glued to. Uh, connective tissue is going to be typically high. Um, most connective tissues have a lot of extracellular matrix. Uh, and sometimes the extracellular matrix is high on fibers, sometimes it's high on ground substance, sometimes, as in blood, the extracellular matrix is actually a liquid. Um, so it varies a lot, but it's typically a, a significant part. Um, then um, muscular tissues tends to be low. Uh, we have, a, again, a tiny bit of glue sticks it to its connective tissue wrapper and nervous tissue uh, I would say medium low okay we've got some amount of, of cellular matrix around those all those nerve cells sometimes but it depends you know if, if it's a nerve it's pretty much all cells if it's like the brain it's got some extracellular matrix there um, vascularity so none Red's a good blood vessel color. Um, so, none, none, none. Okay. Uh, so it's not even low, it's just not there at all. Uh, so, in the case of epithelial and muscular, that's because the cell is, you know, the, the tissue is jam packed with cells, there's no room for blood vessels. In the case of nervous tissue, that is part of it, but the other part of it is that you have this thing called the blood-brain barrier, um, and, and similarly a blood-spinal cord barrier that keeps blood vessels out of the tissue deliberately. You don't want um, stuff, um, just anything, getting into your brain, uh, or at least your body doesn't. Um, and then, so connective tissues are the ones that have to bear the weight of that, so that's typically um, high. A lot of vasculature in it, uh, and so you know the the typical pattern here is like the epidermis and the dermis under it. You have lots of cells, almost no matrix, and no vessels in the epidermis. In the dermis, you have 
very few cells, lots of matrix, and a high number of blood vessels, some of which supply blood directly to the epidermis so that it has nutrients and oxygen and the things that, that's as you need. Uh, the opposite of this pattern, uh, you can always find a connective tissue that, that doesn't fit this pattern, adipose tissue, full of cells, not much matrix, uh, cartilage tissue, no blood vessels at all, which is one of the reasons cartilage doesn't regrow very fast. Uh, innervation. Actually, um, the connection to the nervous system is not full of nerves, but uh, it, you know, epithelial tissues tend to be highly connected tissues. Okay, remember the derm, the epidermis has those uh, tactile cells in it to inform the nervous system what's going on. Uh, the sweat glands have to be activated by the nervous system in the first place, so they need to be connected. Uh, so many. Uh, Many epithelial tissues are highly connected to the nervous system. There are a few that aren't, but most of them are. Um, connective tissues, um, nerves uh, tend to uh, nerves tend to pass through here. Okay, connective tissues often carry nerves to other things, but very few. Uh, other than the occasional pain sensor, uh, very few connective tissues actually uh, are you know, considered innervated. Uh, you don't really activate a piece of cartilage. Uh, so, or really sense what's going on in it, except that occasionally it hurts. Uh, muscular innervation would be uh, high from a motor point of view, um, and we used to think not at all from a sensory point of view, but um, recent discoveries of, of these things called muscle spindles uh, in skeletal muscles indicate that there are uh, muscle tissues that uh, are constantly informing the brain what's going on uh, inside the muscle. So uh, we'll put that as medium for sensory. Uh, nervous tissue. Uh, uh, how would the nervous system not be, you know, how would nervous tissue not be connected to the nervous system? That's, that's kind of a, uh, I, I actually, I write duh because I'm not sure what to put there because it's, uh, you know, this, uh, this is uh, the nervous system. So you could either say it's entirely connected to the nervous system, or you could say it's not innervated because it is the nerves. I mean, you could, you could argue both ways. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to cop out and just say that is the nervous system. Uh, regeneration. Uh, epithelial tissues. Highly, yes, high. Uh, high and relatively fast. Okay, they have a high capacity to regenerate and they're relatively fast at doing it. Uh, you swallow a tortilla chip uh, that you didn't chew completely, it'll scratch the epithelial cells off your throat, you'll feel it for a few minutes, and it will get past it pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, then we have connective tissues, uh, again, typically, you know, but e even typically we can't say a lot. Uh, so I'm going to say as far as ability to regenerate is highly variable, um, but when they do regenerate, it tends to be slow. Okay, You can completely regrow a bone if it, if it breaks, uh, as long as it's been set. Yes, and how many people here haven't broken a bone at some point? And then it's, uh, but uh, uh, you know, you, bones grow pretty slowly, though often takes weeks to months to, to heal a bone. Uh, cartilage, as I said, ability to regenerate is questionable, and when it does, it's very slow. Uh, but other connective tissues, you know, uh, much to the chagrin of most Americans, fat tissue is quite able to regenerate itself. 
Uh, and uh, liver tissue actually is an amazing regenerator. Uh, you, you can destroy 90% of your liver through uh, toxic foods and alcoholism and certain forms of hepatitis and, and that sort of thing. And the liver, if given a chance, will rebound and grow back that 90% of its tissue. So uh, again, though, it's a slow process. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's but it, it's incredible tissue, though. Uh, muscular uh, would be, I'm going to say, medium in terms of its ability to regenerate, and it is also slow, okay? We used to think muscles were not capable of regenerating at all, that you would just, you know, whatever muscle fibers you had left would have to carry the weight of, of the muscle fibers that had been damaged. Uh, but again, recent discoveries have shown that there are little muscle stem cells that hang around in the borders of a muscle uh, tissue and that over, you know, given enough time, they will migrate into the areas where the muscle has been damaged and re regrow the muscle fibers. Uh, and then, and then uh, nervous tissues, uh, ability to regenerate, uh, is low, and again, it's it's pretty slow for what regeneration you do see. Uh, we're constantly making new discoveries about that. Uh, one of the first research labs I worked in, we were looking at the ability of uh, electrical stimulation to cause uh, nerves in your arm to regrow if there was a significant damage to them. Uh, and it turns out that they're pretty good at that if given, given a chance and given the right stimulation. Uh, Spinal cord neurons, on the other hand, are the most persistently stubborn non-regenerators we've found in the biology world. We, we just, not even stem cell transplants have been able to fix that one. So we're, we're really perplexed by that one. Uh, and it's almost as if the body is designed to, once the spinal cord breaks, just give up. Uh, and uh, we're not sure why. It seems like a, a weird thing. Uh, okay, so functions. Uh, Again, here um, you could break down functions in terms of what they do for your body a whole bunch of different ways. The main thing I want to point out here is, is the, uh, the thing uh, that this tissue is most capable of doing, what the cells seem programmed to do. Uh, and you know, there are two main functions of an epithelial tissue. One is to be a barrier. Uh, they've got something We'll talk about it in the epithelial section called tight junctions that form between cells to keep anything from getting through between them. Uh, and the other is they can secrete or uh, absorb. Okay, Some epithelial cells are specifically tailored to secrete stuff. We call them glandular cells. Uh, some epithelial cells are specifically tailored to absorb things across their membranes. Um, and then there are some, like in the kidney tubules, that do both. They secrete what you want to keep in your body, or secrete what you want to get rid of from your body and absorb what you want to keep. Uh, hold on to that thought until AMD2, I'm afraid. Uh, then connective tissues, um, really hard to say if there's a, a single unifying function of these things. Sometimes they connect stuff, sometimes they support stuff, sometimes they secrete matrix, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes they store stuff. So that's, I'm just going to leave that one blank and you can fill in lots of things if you want. Um, muscular tissues, uh, the big thing they do is contract. Um, and that is to either cause or Oppose movement um, or to um, change the size of something. So uh, muscle tissues constrict the bronchioles in your uh, bronchi and bronchioles in your lungs when your lungs get irritated so that you don't breathe in as much smoke or something. Uh, what? Storage, like. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, I will put a couple of things down for connective. So we, we have, you know, 
There's the connect support function, a, a physical uh, physical linkage or, or physical support of something. There is uh, protection. A lot of connective tissues protect other tissues physically or biochemically, sorry. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, and then uh, the other one is, is many connective tissues uh, uh, will store uh, or even in, in some cases uh, produce uh, important biochemicals for your body. Okay, uh, The liver is, is a great example there of, of not only storing but producing. Uh, the bone marrow not only stores but actively produces red blood cells. So uh, good stuff there. Uh, then over here you know, so again, that, that connective tissue is such a catch-all group, it's hard to define everything. Um, and the nervous tissue is uh, that they carry signals, uh, they sense, integrate, decide, and respond. It's, it's kind of the pattern that a nervous system circuit follows. Uh, so. Uh, that can be as simple as the one I've mentioned before. If you touch something hot and you sense the heat, you integrate very quickly in a spinal reflex the, the fact that you're touching something hot uh, and you right away send a signal back out telling you to pull your muscles away uh, or telling your muscles to pull your finger away. Uh, or it can be something much more complicated like uh, you hear uh, a sound, you integrate that sound with what you're seeing in your environment as do, can you recognize what you're hearing um, you decide if it's something that you need to uh, move toward move away from ignore uh, and, and then you respond appropriately based on that decision so uh, really different levels of complexity possible there um, and then locations um, I'll leave for y'all to to look up any specific examples you want to but the, uh, the basic idea is this is found at barriers between uh, your tissues and something else. Uh, it could be the outside world, could be a fluid-filled space in your body. Uh, connective tissues found anywhere that you need to fill space. Uh, muscular tissues found anywhere you need something to move or not move. Uh, and uh, nervous tissues are found very specifically in nerves and in the brain and spinal cord, but also sensory tissue is scattered throughout the body.